Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for virtual Bulldogs Behind the Scenes, featuring a look at the future of the new UMD Center for Sales Excellence. Before we begin, we are going to take a moment here to pause so that everyone has a chance to log on. While we wait, feel free to type your name, grad year if you're an alum, and where you are tuning in from in the chat box, and we will begin in just a moment. Well, my name is Molly Clevin, and I'm from the University of Minnesota Duluth Alumni Relations team. Today, we are going to take a behind the scenes look at the proposed plan and vision for the UMD Center for Sales Excellence that will be housed in the library annex. Before we begin, I'd like to highlight some of our past programs. We've explored places like the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum, Amsoil Arena, Tweed Museum of Art, and the Superior Hiking Trail but we've also experienced tours of the UMD campus, including the Romano Gym, UMD Greenhouse, and the Chocolate Lab. You can access all of these events on our website, d.umn.edu backslash alumni. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our alumni relations website. You'll receive an email with that link once it is ready. Finally, we'll have time at the end of the presentation to answer live questions. To submit a question, use the question and answer button on the bottom of the screen. Now to introduce our guests. We are fortunate to have Jessica Gardner, Dr. Rajiv Vyadyanathan, and Suzanne Anderson with us today. Rajiv is Professor and Marketing Department Head at UMD and LSBE. He has several years of teaching, consulting, and research experience. He has won awards for his teaching, research, and service at the University of Minnesota. Rajiv received his PhD from Washington State University. Jessica started at UMD as the Director of the Professional Sales Program and Instructor of Marketing in 2021. In her role, she, she teaches fundamentals of selling, coaches students for collegiate sales competitions, collaborates with industry professionals, and serves on the LSB Outreach Committee. She received her MBA from UW-Eau Claire. Suzanne is the development director for the Labovitz School of Business and Economics, a position she has held for six years. She is a 1992 UMD alum and a proud Bulldog. Prior to working at UMD, Suzanne was the director of planned giving for the Essentia Health Foundation. I will now hand it over to Rajiv, Jessica, and Suzanne. Thank you for that uh, introduction, uh, Molly. I am delighted to be here with my colleagues and uh, tell you a little about the story of the sales center at UMD that we are actively in the process of building. Uh, I hope uh, most of you are digging out of this storm if you're in this region, and uh, I hope my internet connection remains stable through this, this uh, event. So, Here's, here's the agenda for the day. Uh, I will briefly start by telling you why we started this effort several years ago before turning it over to Jess to talk about what we're going to be building to achieve our goals. And then Suzanne will come in at the end and wrap it up with uh, an answer on how we're going to get this done. So let me start by presenting some facts, some key numbers that will help you understand why we are here. So on the screen, you see a bunch of numbers. Let's start with that number 50. Over 50% 50 of all college graduates, regardless of their major, find themselves in customer-facing roles in their, in their careers. And of course, there's really no customer facing role that that doesn't involve sales. And by the way, that doesn't include positions where sales skills are essential for being effective in the workplace, even if they're not explicitly in a customer facing role. As, as one person said when we were discussing career roles some time ago, we're actually all in sales, no matter what our role is. Let's move on to that number 4,000. That is the number of degree granting post-secondary institutions in the US. So this includes 
all post high school institutions. It includes public, it includes uh, private, it includes two year, four year. So it's a full range of institutions. Okay, so that's an impressive number. Why is this relevant for our talk here today? 38, believe it or not, of those 4,000 post high school institutions, there are 38 uni US universities that have a full sales major. And of course, we are one of those. This, this number should astound you, given the need for and the industry demand for people who are effective at sales. And hopefully this will also tell you why we're so excited about our sales major at LSB. So let's get to the final two numbers on this slide. 14 is the number of 3M frontline partner schools in the US of which we are one. And 3M has long been a, a strong supporter of our sales program. Uh, we do have several corporate relationships, but I, but I highlight 3M here just because I know they're a very data-driven company and they have told us using their data how successful our graduates have been uh, at 3M in terms of their actual sales productivity relate, relative to many other schools. Um, I know we have some of these graduates here on this, in, uh, on this call and they've all been extremely successful. So 3M partners with a few schools and at the moment there are only 14 3M frontline program partner schools and we are one of them. And finally, the last number on the slide is that of the public universities in the state of Minnesota that have, we are the only one that has a sales major. And this is despite the fact that research has shown that graduates of sales programs ramp up significantly faster and experience significantly less turnover than graduates of other programs. This need for uh, sales education has never been more urgent. The jobs are there. The industry needs graduates who are educated in sales techniques and processes. Um, and that's where we really decided to, to step in. UMD is actually in a very unique position to step in and, and address this gap. We have a long and well-established history of building high quality focused programs that are led by an experienced program director. We, we have evidence that our model works and results in top-notch graduates that are snapped up by industry. It was uh, many, many years ago. I mean, it's been 20 years now since we started our rather unique financial markets program, where undergraduate students manage a, a real portfolio of funds under the oversight of an industry advisory board and led by a successful industry professional. That fund, which is completely managed by students, sits at over $3 million now. And it's been a very, very successful program and served as a model for many of these other programs I'll, I'll briefly mention. So in 2011, our department, the Department of Marketing, launched what we now call the Consumer Insights and Analytics Program, which is also under the direction of an, a director who came from industry. As you can imagine, that at that time when we started it, we were one of the first undergraduate analytics programs in a business school in the country at, uh, at that point. Now it's become relatively common. The program has been extremely successful. We have a 100% placement rate. It has among the uh, highest starting salaries of all, all business majors. In 2013, we started the marketing and graphic design major in collaboration with the uh, Department of Art and Design. And again, it was the first of its kind in the country when we launched it. It was driven by industry needs and industry demands. And, and now we have students actually seeking out UMD just because of this major. And these students have quite a significant advantage in the job market because they, they graduate with not only a, a marketing degree, but very specific graphic design skills. So we have a history of launching these kind of innovative, industry-relevant majors in the school uh, that, and, and we've proven that we can do it and do it well. 
So it's not just a dream of something that we hope we can do. We, we've shown that this model works and we, we do it uh, extremely well. The sales major is just the latest in that line of innovative programs. Our sales professional sales major launched in fall of 2019, and it's already one of the largest majors in the in the school. Uh, I, I remember as the department head, when we put together the proposal for this major to our board of regents, we were expecting, I think, uh, uh, 50 students in the major at the end of five years. And at the end of the first year, we had uh, close to 100 students in the in the major. Uh, we plan to make it one of the best programs of its kind in the country. And to tell you exactly how we're going to do that, I'm going to pass this on to Jess Gardner, who is our uh, director of the program. Thank you, Rajiv. Appreciate that. Um, really good insight shared. I, I appreciate that. And I'm very excited to be a part um, of our sales program. So it is really my, my hope that in creating a center for sales excellence, that we can bring some of UMD's sales program um, to be recognized across the nation. It is, it is a unique opportunity to bring some of my past experiences into the, in this case, a fairly newly designed sales program. And I'm very excited today to share some insight at um, opportunities for a new dedicated space where we are able to give our, our future sales leaders the experience they deserve. If you can do the next slide, sorry. <laughs> Since entry level sales positions are very widely available across many organizations and industries, we know the demand is there. And we want to help create and produce students that are going to have the sales techniques as well as the soft skills that is necessary to be successful. So as Rajiv has shared, it has been proven that students from sales programs do have shorter onboarding times and they can start to produce quicker. So this is why so many organizations focus specifically on this talent pool. So next we'll talk about our educational components. Having a sales major gives our students an opportunity to take three distinct sales classes. So I'll just mention those real briefly. Our fundamentals of selling class does give them the opportunity for some hands-on sales simulations, as well as our advanced professional selling where they get um, team selling experience as well as negotiations. And our unique program also includes sales analytics. So our intent is, as part of their degree requirement, to help them learn adaptive selling techniques in order to solve problems. So we use real world examples. And we also encourage our students to participate in internships and extracurriculars. 3M has been mentioned once before, but I do want to just mention that we have the unique opportunity to partner with schools like 3M to offer distinguished internship opportunities. And this is really highly um, giving our students the skill set that's going to set them apart from other majors and other programs. And I think Rajiv did mention, but we do have many other companies that we partner with and we invite them in for uh, guest lectures and speaking obligations in our class. All right, so next, when we talk about student experience, um, I wanna just mention that we not only encourage our students to explore careers in sales and really to get them excited about those opportunities, but we also try to help give them a jump start on gaining some of those skills. And this can be done inside the classroom as well as other experiential um, learning opportunities. So we do compete in four different collegiate level sales competitions. Um, this year coming up, we will host our first ever internal sales competition, allowing up to 35 students to participate and get feedback from industry representatives. Um, our sales club, which some of you may or may not be familiar with, um, a fairly new student organization that was organized after our sales major. Um, this gives opportunities for the 35 active members to participate not only in collegiate level competitions, but to also plan for our, sale, our annual sales summit. Um, this event was hosted last year for the first time, and we had over 12 corporate sponsors and 300 students across our campus in attendance. 
We do hope to have success with our second annual um, sales summit, which is student run and organized, and that will be on uh, February 16th. So now onto the sales center itself. Um, in my opinion, the dedicated space is necessary in order for us to accomplish all of the learning objectives that we want. To give our students that real experience that they can take as they become future sales leaders. It'll offer the opportunity and chance for live streaming, and this can be done in the classroom setting or for competitions. So we would be able to use the video capabilities and the live stream to get live feedback from instructors and industry representatives. We'd also like to have computer equipment for video recording, and this can assist, like I said, for some of those events that we would host, classroom presentations, as well as other sales training and webinars. So we'd like to also engage with industry professionals and have them stay involved in our program. So this space could also be used for intern, um, sorry, excuse me, in interviewing, mentoring, as well as other networking opportunities with our students. So as we move on to the sales center space, um, I'm very excited that we've been able to find a space for our sales center to potentially um, be, de be designed, or I'm sorry, we're in the pre-design phase. So once we actually get to the next phase, which Suzanne will talk a little bit more about, um, we would like to be able to utilize the space and we have a pre-design to share with you today. Some of the features that we have included, um, we actually did a lot of research on what would be necessary to be successful. And one area that I'd like to just point out here is the collaborative learning classroom, as well as the eight breakout rooms where our students can participate and practice outside of class and in class for conducting their role plays. There will be some guest office space and a conference room, which we can also use for industry um, and advisory council meetings, as well as for our sales club leaders to utilize. Some of the equipment that we would include would be some capabilities for video recording, as well as potentially a CRM system to give our students real life experience. So now we're gonna transition to a very brief video to show what the existing space looks like, as well as some of the ideas we have. Okay. So as you can see, LSB Atrium is a place where students often congregate as they transition between classes. So it was important for us to consider the sales center being conveniently located near this area. The new design would be proposed and that is proposed would, would require us to knock out a wall that would be next to our existing first floor advising office. This entrance would be um, would lead them into the common space that you'll see in just a moment. So as you can see, the exterior of the sales center would look similar to other design elements in LSBE. We wanted it to be consistent with the current image. It would be welcoming with large signage to distinguish it, and then would lead clearly into a se or seamlessly into a new designed commons area with natural light given off by the skylight. Now you can see some of the existing space that we're working with. And this, this space is located currently on the second floor of the library annex, with a small portion of it being shared with the library archives and special collections. We would, however, have a separate entryway that comes from LSBE, and this would lead us into the commons area. So now you're looking at the pre-design. So just take a note of some of the spaces that we discussed earlier, the active learning classroom, conference room, as well as some of those eight breakout rooms. It may be hard to envision with all the, the large amount of books that are now in this space, but we would have over 4,500 square feet of total space for our Center for Sales Excellence. The library side would be a nicely designed quiet space for students to study. And these two distinct spaces would, as you'll be able to see the existing spaces now, is one level on the second floor, but we would have an existing or put in a wall that would separate those two spaces with two distinct entrances. 
So as we're viewing now, you can see the pillars and the railing that would separate the two areas. The existing stairway and railings would be removed to fill in the floor to complete um, one level area. And this is what the, where the commons area would be. So it gives us a little sneak peek on what's there. And again, some of the design elements. So I'd love the opportunity to turn it over to Suzanne and she can share a little more insight on those two areas. Thank you, Jess and Rajiv. And as Rajiv mentioned, I'll explain a little bit about the how and how we hope to get here. So we are currently in our fundraising phase of the project, and we do hope to have that wrapped up by spring if possible. The entire project, including the library's archives and special collections, as well as the sales center, will cost about $13 million total. Our goal is to raise between four and five million of that total. So how we're doing at that is we do have some naming opportunities available for the various rooms and what we can get into a little bit more of that floor plan as we have some questions. But the naming opportunities range from 50,000 to 2 million if someone would choose to name the entire center. Um, we do have a conference room named already for 250,000 and one of the breakout rooms for 100,000. And so, uh, like I said, we've got some rooms, some of our just auxiliary rooms of storage room, copy room, things like that start at 50. Then we have a couple of our mobile executive suites as well as the director's office is 75,000. All of the breakout rooms are 100,000. Conference room is 500,000. We're looking at the whole atrium, possibly a million and the whole center, 2 million. So we've got all of that information available if anyone is interested. Um, happy to discuss this further with any of you individually, or if your company is interested in a naming opportunity, my counterpart, Christy Schmidt, would be happy to meet with your company as well. So we're actively fundraising and just wanting to get out and share the word at this point. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for sharing with us the plan for this important resource. Um, right now, we are going to transition to our live question and answer. So we will flip our cameras on here and um, get started with some of the questions. If you haven't submitted a question yet, feel free to use the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. Perfect. Um, I think this first question I will direct towards Rajiv um, and feel free to pass it off if you feel like someone else would be better to answer it. But the first question is, how is LSBE promoting and positioning their sales program status versus other universities? I'll start by giving a brief answer and then pass it on to Jess, who I think is in the, the best position to answer this. Um, I, I think the, that's a really great question because, uh, as I said when I talked about it, the goal is not just to offer a sales program, but to have a sales center that is uh, best of its kind in the country. So one of the things we did is that uh, we, we did a lot of research visiting lots of other programs before we even developed a proposal for our major. So some of the things that make it unique are the fact that we are one of the very few, if only uh, sales majors that requires a class in sales analytics uh, of all students. Uh, once we have the sales center, I think we'll have a huge competitive advantage over other programs uh, just by virtue of students being able to practice. Uh, John Kratz, who I know is on, on this uh, call, he he would always say that the goal is um, to not to learn to do, but to do to learn. So we always, the, the goal is get students actually practicing skills, put them in situations in a safe environment where they can be uncomfortable, I guess. So I'll stop there and pass it on to Jess to add to that. Great, yes, thank you. And I would like to just highlight a few things. We did, We just recently began our sales program advisory council and they have been really great with helping us. Um, this will be something that's ongoing, but we work with a lot of different companies to get some insight into what is being done in industry. And to kind of pair that, I think it's also important to distinguish ourselves differently from other campuses because there are so many unique programs out there. So we're currently working in our next meeting to update our mission, our um, kind of our overall objectives as um, a program and our advisory 
advisory council will be um, really helpful in those ways. So I think distinguishing and finding um, before our center is even built, where do we want to distinguish? How will we be utilizing um, the center itself? So it's it's still in the works, but um, we're open to some valuable information and insight from industry professionals. And this next question um, is also for you, Jess, um, but is there room for interdiscipline collaboration between majors within the center? Yes, well, I would really hope that we can continue to collaborate with the other areas that we do currently. So, for example, a lot of our companies hire across the board uh, many different business and non-business majors. Um, we don't have anything on paper yet to um, have like a certificate or something for non-LSBE majors at this point, um, but I would really like to collaborate across campus with different majors and really different skill sets. Um, in the meantime, we do have our sales club open to all majors, and we do host events like Sales Summit to encourage all students um, that have any interest in just exploring sales careers. Um, so I would think that we could definitely take that a higher level, um, incorporating, we have analytics incorporated to some degree, um, but a lot of our students are double majors with graphic design and sales. So I feel like we've already done a good job, but we'll take it a little bit further on that as well. To add on to that again, because I think it's a great question, that, that is very much part of our long-term plan uh, to, because these sales skills, I started off by talking about how these skills, sales skills are essential for everyone, regardless of their major. The only thing that is uh, preventing us from having sales minor or certificate, as Jess said, is simply capacity right now. Our business classes are, are quite full. And so once we build some capacity, get this going, we, we hope to be able to serve the campus more broadly. Thank you for that. Um, we did have a question come in, um, a little bit of history and context. I know we had talked about John Kratz, um, but this person mentioned that John was a visionary for this project in the sales major. They're wondering if they can name one of the rooms in his honor. I would say absolutely yes. <laughs> that is a fantastic yes. idea. So, and by yeah. the way, I, I'm sure I'm sure that John's on, but I do want to say uh, really a thank you to him for continuing on and working with us. He is the chair of our advisory council, so um, he's going to continue to uh, provide some of that vision and connection. So I just wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. And actually, we have a question from John. Um, wondering how can a UMD LSB alumnus or alumna get involved with the program? And what is the best way to elevate this initiative within the company that you're currently working for? Suzanne, do you want to start? And I can add on. Well, um, certainly. My, my role is particularly the philanthropic partnerships. So primarily individuals who might want to give back if they're an alum and uh, by partnering with us and helping this program move forward. Um, you know, as I mentioned, there's naming opportunities, but if someone certainly doesn't want their name on something, we have a capital project fund and anyone is willing you know, and able to donate to that if, if they wish. And so from my point of view, it's the philanthropic partnerships, but I know Jess has many other ways to be involved as well. Yes, and, and Christy will be working with the company side if there is ways to be involved in being a part of building the sales center itself. Um, outside of that, we do a lot of uh, corporate memberships and working closely with industry professionals. Um, so there are opportunities to work in the class or come in for class visits. Um, we do a lot with our sales club. So we like to have speakers for our podcast, um, have uh, or have representatives coming in to speak to the sales club. So those are a lot of different ways. Um, we do uh, really want people to start following the sales club on their social media and following their podcast. Um, they've had some really great guests and it's a great opportunity for students to hear some insight from successful sales professionals. Um, and I do believe that our alumni office also does um, some opportunities to connect them with mentors. So if anyone wanted to be an official mentor, that's been a great success. Um, as well as if they're hiring, we do a lot with our career center. So internships, jobs, they can um, send those my way to connect with students too. So hopefully that answers it. I think so. Thank you. Um, this question is directed towards you, Suzanne. Um, so it was mentioned that there was a need for $13 million. 
Um, and it sounds like 4 million of that total um, is, is looking to be fundraised. So how is the difference funded? So we do have the support from UMD administration to move this project forward and to actively fundraise. And so, you know, we've been given a goal of four to 5 million, but certainly if we could raise the whole 13, you know, I think that would be fantastic as well, but we're trying to be a little bit realistic, but we do have support from the, um, you know, Board of Regents to move forward, UMD administration to move forward. So I guess it would be a, a matter of a combination of funds, whether UMD would support that, our own business school, this, we're partnering with the library as well on this project. So my counterpart, Rob Hoffman, fundraises for the library. So we're all really working collaboratively, collaboratively together on this, um, but there's support behind us. So it's, it's kind of to be determined, but we're trying to fundraise as much as we can privately right now. And I guess this next question is uh, dependent on the fundraising, but what is your timeline um, in order to get the sales center up and running? And I will direct this towards Jess. Jess, if you wanna answer that question, that would be great. Yes, um, I, my internet just went a little, um, by the way, Rajiv is trying to log back in. He lost his connection. Um, I just, can you repeat the question one more time, Molly? Was it just on the timeline? Yeah, yep. It was uh, just curious about the timeline for when the center might be open um, based on obviously the, the fundraising efforts. Um, if you could talk a little bit about when you would like um, this to be up and running. Well, I'm going to let Suzanne handle this, but I actually would love if it stays on our original plan, which I believe would be to have groundbreaking in 2024. Um, but Suzanne, do you want to share just a little on how that could happen? And, and I'm sure there's some flexibility and things that need to happen. Mm -hmm. So in our ultimate perfect world, we would finish the fundraising. So if we could raise that four to five million by this spring, we could actually move ahead and our first um, piece of the puzzle could happen this next summer. That would be the earliest. So that would all be adjusted depending on fundraising, but that would be the goal if we can get that all together. And we've got a lot of interest, interested people and companies, but um, we're just uh, getting the word out right now. Uh, perfect. And there was another question that came in. I'm curious about the B2B sales um, component within the center and if there is an area of focus within that space. Um, Jess, if you want to comment on that, um, just about the B2B um, collaboration. Right. So I'm, I'm hoping they're saying like B2B. Can you hear me okay? Okay, um, so we do focus a lot of our, our classes with the simulations as well as the collegiate level sales competitions. They tend to be a majority of business to business sales, um, real scenarios that are, are very similar to an, an actual situation or an actual sales meeting. Um, however, we do have a lot of, uh, we do like to bring in B2C as well to show the different diversity. So a lot of the companies I work with, I wouldn't say a lot, but a, a fair number also have the opportunity for students to uh, be more of like an independent sales rep and, and start their own business. And, and those tend to be B2C. Um, so I do like to expose students to, to all different types of sales and really just to open their mind to see what's a good fit for them. Um, but there is majority is B2B sales at this point. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and another question just about um, collaboration with uh, within different departments. Um, so this question asks, in the spirit of we are all in sales mantra, I would love to see engineers and other technical majors come out of UMD with an LSB sales certificate, as this could be a strong differentiator for those students as they enter the workforce. Are those interdepartment conversations taking place? Um, I'll start and then I, can I pass okay. it off to you, Rajiv? I just, go, I want to, yeah, I just, I just want to highlight that there is the interest there. Um, and I do have um, two current members of our sales club that are engineering students. Um, it's really exciting. Um, they obviously can't necessarily take a course at this time because of their um, scheduled grad dates and, and the requirements in engineering. Um, however, they are connecting with our students and industry professionals and have an interest. Um, so I'm really happy for that. 
And then we've also had some guest um, speakers, one who was an alumni that shared his experience. Um, engineering background um, ended up in a leadership role and had some sales exposure as well. Um, so I think it is, um, there is definitely the need and we're very aware of that. Um, but I'll let Rajiv speak on where we're at with the conversations. Those conversations have been taking place over an extended period of time and uh, it is absolutely definitely within our long term goal to to establish those kinds of relationships have a have a certificate i think it 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 definitely is something that benefits the uh, students in technical majors there is an interest there they have contacted us about this um in the short run the only thing preventing us from doing it is uh, a frankly capacity i mean we're we're uh, the, the sales major has been much more successful than we we anticipated and those our classes are completely full with those so we would need uh, considerably more uh, high quality faculty to teach additional classes not just in the sales classes but also in the prerequisites like principles of marketing and things so we'd have to expand our capacity by hiring more faculty so that might take a little longer but but we will absolutely get there Wonderful. Well, I think to wrap us up for our session today, I would like for each one of you um, just to share what you're most excited about um, for the new sales center. And Rajiv, I'll, we'll start with you. I, I think uh, this image right here says it all. This is something that we've been working on. The first proposal uh, that uh, we put together for the sales center was, I mean, a formal proposal was in 2016. And so we've there have been a lot of people working on this for a long time. And to get to the stage where we have a pre-design and we're, we're close, we're so close to getting it done. Uh, I'm just very, very excited about this. And at the end of the day, what we do as educators is all about impact. And I think this is something that's going to have a huge positive impact on our students, our community, our broader business community in the state. Suzanne, what is your favorite thing or the thing you're most looking forward to? Yes, um, actually seeing this come to fruition, it's been such a passion of our whole team to get this off the ground. And it has been just so rewarding to see the progress we've made so far. And uh, it's just such an exciting project to be a part of. So just seeing it happen, having those hard hats on, breaking ground, that's what I envision. And finally, Jess. Yes, well, I would like to say just a couple of things on that. I'll keep it short and sweet. But I do think that it's going to really distinguish our the quality of the students that we're able to to send off after graduation. Um, the the capacity we have right now to even be taking part in the four competitions we go to, it's very challenging. I don't. Um, there's there's a lack of space to utilize. Um, last year we did some virtual role plays for competitions. Um, there's not a quiet, dedicated space for our students to compete virtually at this point. And we would not, at the current moment, be able to host um, a competition where we invite other uh, other universities or even just to host an internal one um, is going to be very challenging. So having a dedicated space not only gets students excited and really passionate about sales, but it also gives them the ability to really have the exposure. And we're traveling to, to uh, regional and national competitions with schools across the nation that have these dedicated spaces. So to not have it is is setting, um, it gives us a little disadvantage. So I wanna make sure um, when this is built that it's highly utilized and then of course shared with other majors as well. Um, but I think it will, will definitely um, have the capacity and the space to prepare our students much better for, for every aspect of their, their new careers. So I'm really excited and I hope it works out. <laughs> Well, we do too. Um, I just want to thank you all for taking the time to share with us a little bit about the plans and vision for the Sales um, Center of Excellence. Um, hopefully we will have a part two here um, once it's completed. Um, if you have other questions that weren't answered today, feel free to reach out directly to our office, alumni at d.umn.edu, um, or um, you can feel free to reach out to any one of our panelists today. Additionally, if you're not an alum of UMD, we do average about one to two virtual Bulldogs behind the scenes webinars per month. 
If you would like to be added to our mailing list, just please email our office, again, alumni at d.umn.edu. Um, so again, a big thanks to Jessica, Rajiv, and Suzanne, and we hope that you'll all join us again for future online events. Thanks and have a great day.